that's on schedule or very close to schedule. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming this morning to visit us here at Northumberland Mills Hospital, what we call our gem of Northumberland, of West Northumberland. Uh, great to have you all here and taking time out. I know there's lots of other things you could be doing this morning, uh, but it's good to, to see everyone here. Um, my name is Jack Russell, and I am the chair of the board of Northumberland Mills Hospital. And on behalf of the board, we would like to welcome you. I have one other member of the board here with, with us today. That's Selby Beth. Beth is the vice chair. And uh, it's great to, that she could join us as well. Uh, we'll have some other board members arriving a little later. We're having a meeting today. What else would you like to do? Um, also, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce Linda Davis. Linda, our CEO and president of the, of the Montgomery Hills Hospital. Great to have her here, and you'll hear more from her shortly. Um, we also have several members of staff here, which is uh, great to see as well. Uh, welcome, everyone. So, Lou, it's very good to welcome you here. Those of you, I think everybody probably recognizes Lou and Aldi, our, our MPP for 20 November, November 20 West. Um, what you might not recognize is the little appendage that he has beside him. And I think he'll probably tell you all about how he's trying to act something less than his real age. But I uh, think that's a very good treatment in the year. Closer to home. We would have like, we would have taken very good care of him. No, I'm not testing No, Um so uh, I don't think we have any local councillors present, um, but um, also I would like to take this opportunity to introduce Marg Rez. Marg is right here. Marg is the acting chair of the Central East Lynn. She just uh, took over that responsibility about two weeks ago, I think, when Lynn Gladstone finished up his term. Um, Marg is, uh, is, has an interesting health care background. She's been, the, well, she retired from the position of executive director of the uh, care and nursing from uh, Ontario College of Nurses. So she knows hospitals and healthcare and nursing uh, very well. It's great to have you join us today. Um, without further ado, the, the, the microphone is yours. Welcome. So the real story is that Part of uh, our job as MPPs, we have to make sure services our community are delivered in a satisfactory way. <laughs> so a week ago Saturday at Ditch Five, and the service was fantastic. It was another hospital closer to home, but uh, they were doing really well. So certainly it, it meets the requirements that the residents expect. So I'm uh, really, really delighted to be here this morning. You know, uh, healthcare is one of those things that seems to be in the media once in a while, uh, but, uh, but also to talk about uh, this particular hospital and uh, some of the uh, uh, other uh, health care priorities that, that we face in the, in the province. So, Linda, Jack, thank you for posting this this morning, and uh, Mark, uh, thank you for being here and asking for Lynn. And we have a number of Lynn staff here as well, and thank you for being here and making this possible. It's, it's good to be here. So I have about 25 pages here, but if you want me, I don't need the script very well. And then when I'm finished, I said, well, I, know, I forgot something, but I will try my best. Uh, so part of the reason that we're here today, as you know, in the last budget, uh, uh, government committed some uh, $1 billion extra to health care, and $1 million was, uh, was uh, committed to, uh, to hospitals across the province and the part and on the base funding uh, piece. And part of that, what that really meant is that uh, you know, some of those hospitals uh, in, on this, in this fiscal year will receive an additional $613,000 as part of an ongoing, uh, an addition to the base funding. Uh, and I just want to take uh, an opportunity to say thanks to the board, Jack, you folks and staff at the hospital, We'll go through some rigorous challenges to meet those needs. And I know that uh, it's no use to you, there's less of work to do. But I think things like this will hopefully make our life a little bit easier. 
and I know that by working together with the Lynn's and government, we're going to get there, I'm confident. Uh, you know, health care is uh, changing as we speak. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, either we adapt to change and keep up with times or we really fall behind. And that's a bit of a struggle at times, so to be fair. But I, but I know I'm confident that, too, that uh, with this hospital and other hospitals across the province, we're going to, uh, we're going to get there. Just a couple of hours ago, was in Campbellford, and they were successful, I believe, about $123,000 additional base funding. And that's a small little hospital. They're treated a little bit different. And probably a, a month, a month and a half ago, uh, Plenty Healthcare, which has, is a part of it, is part of, of my jurisdiction, at the Trenton Hospital. But altogether, they were able to garnish an extra $4 million based funding between the four hospital sites. So uh, we are making some steps towards trying to deliver the care. The other thing that I think it's uh, not in my notes, but I'll speak to it a little bit about is uh, uh, Patients First. It's a new initiative, uh, a new direction, and that goes to speak about what I said a minute ago, we're changing times. Uh, you know, there's a lot of silos, and no fault of anybody, we, we as a society, we allow ourselves to create, and what Patients First try to do is try to make the patient the center of need. Uh, and hopefully we have enough assistance to guide those people to the right place, at the right time, to get the right level of service. And as you know, we've been working for a long time to try to keep people at home because in many cases that's what they'd rather be. So uh, that, that assistance certainly is something that we're striving. And uh, patients first uh, legislation before us in consultation with Acting Across the province entails part of that. So I uh, just want to say again, uh, yeah, for government, thank you for providing that the, the health care that we need in our community here as one component. And I would say also to identify the needs in the way of services. You know, one of the questions I get asked, and I'm going way off script here now, but uh, is that, you know, we talk about, especially when we talk about hospitals, and I try to get the layman's approach to things. We talk about beds, number of beds, size of the building, and you know, on and on and on and on. I, I began to realize a long time ago, and I'm not sure, I think I'm right, but you know, beds and bricks and mortar don't fix people. It's services that fi fix people. We, we, we come to a, a time that hospitals became a catch-all, and they're still, to some extent, they still are. You know, when people can't go anywhere and you've got a sore finger, you go to eMERGE. Well, that's not what eMERGE is meant to be. So my goal, and I can share this with you, and I know that I share this with the minister on a number of occasions, is the fact that I focus on service to provide the community. And that's not necessarily just in a hospital, in a family health team set up, in a community health center. Whoever is there to provide those services, more geared to the needs of that community, to the patient. So that's one of the things I know that I'm going to strive for to help hospitals. And as a matter of fact, we had a, a very good meeting yesterday to talk about some of the issues that are faced not just the South but other hospitals, but as we move down the road. So I will leave you that uh, you'll do the hard work, which you'll be doing a, a fantastic job at, and we as a government will be there with you to make sure we get to where we go. So congratulations on, on you know, keeping the wheels on the bus. Uh, we're not there yet, but I know we'll get there. So. Thank you for hosting us, Mike. Delighted to be here. Thank you very much, uh, Lou. That is very much appreciated. And you know what's most appreciated about it is the fact that what he just announced is a six hundred plus thousand dollar adjustment increase to our base funding. That's the funding that carries forward year by year by year, and that's exactly what we need. Um, and that's really appreciate. One-time funding is fine. We won't, we won't ever refuse one-time funding, but we really like the base stuff. That's the good stuff. Thank you so much. Talking about, you know, you made a comment about how healthcare is changing. Years ago, we used to talk about a hospital in terms of how, big, how many beds. I mean, it is very, very different. I've got an example I have to tell you about. I just recently became a grandfather for the first time. My daughter uh, gave birth in Waterloo. Um, 
she was in the hospital on Saturday, uh, and she was going through the process that one goes through when you give birth. Um, and finally, Sunday night late, um, they went through the inducement process and so on. And she delivered at midnight uh, on Sunday night. She was home in her house at 10 o'clock Monday morning. And I remember a little bit about when she was born. Uh, my wife was in the hospital for five days. So it's a very, very different healthcare system that we're, we're in today. Care is very, very good. Care is even better. But it's different. And I think it's, uh, it's very important that we all recognize that. We've got some great results here. Linda will tell you more about them. Our, our, our length of stays are very low. Uh, our ALC rates are, are lower than most of the hospitals in the Central East Land. I think we're, we're lowest or second lowest pretty much all the time. So we've got some good stuff going here and it's really great to see it recognized with this additional funding. Um, now I would like to uh, ask Margaret to come forward. She's got a few words to say from the Central East Land. Thank you, Mark. Watch the record on this slide. We don't want to have another interview. We don't want one of those. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jack. Can you hear me back there? Um, I'm delighted to be here today representing the Central uh, East Land Community uh, Board. Our CEO, Deborah Deb Hammonds, who is unable to be here today. And uh, the staff of the Central East Land Center. Um, thank you to you and all of you for sharing the Highlights Provincial Health um, budget with us and for recognizing the work of the physicians here, the board here, um, staff and volunteers at the Hospital. Hospital. Uh, Central East Land continues to work with our hospitals, our community, uh, communities that, um, community based agencies, our mental health and addiction providers our long-term care homes, along with this, um, and demonstrates the change to some extent. Um, the home and um, the residents that access the integrated sustainable health care system just in general. Um, today's funding announcement supports the ongoing delivery of vital acute care uh, services in our Cumberland County, and as the hospital and its partners work together to So I wish you all the best as you um, really have a good change. On behalf of the staff, physicians, and volunteers who provide care to patients and families at NHH, I sincerely thank you for your ongoing support of our hospital. We recognize that health care absorbs a very large part of our provincial health care budget, budget, period, and we must continue to stretch those dollars as far as we can within health care. 
We also recognize that in recent years, this government has wisely invested in community-based health care, just as uh, she was speaking about, um, to better support patients before and after their acute care needs. As hospital-based care, as we deliver in NHH, is but one part of a system. And thank you to our partners who are here today from the CHC and the Family Health Team. We are a system. We are partners. However, hospitals are a vital part, and I'm pleased to say that the Ministry of Health has recognized the good work done by hospitals to reduce costs and raise quality by giving this increased funding and base funding, as we've all talked about, that's been announced here today. With today's announcement and the hard work of staff and physicians to implement the initiatives of year one of our hospital improvement plan, NHH should be closer to balancing its budget this year. I say should, as we are just in our fourth year of this operating budget and much can change between now and March 31st, 2017. Today's announcement is very welcome news and is greatly appreciated. The support of the ministry, the support of the Lynn, um, as Jack has said, has been there in the past and obviously ongoing. The path goes, as both uh, Lou and Jack have referred to, is uh, to longer sustainability for NHH. Uh, is still a difficult road. There are a number of still uh, barriers that we must overcome and our path is unclear. We do welcome the opportunity to speak with ministry officials later this summer about our ongoing sustainability. And our goal, of course, is to work collaboratively with the Central East Lynn and the Ministry of Health to find a sustainable path forward for NHH, not only for this year, but also for many years to come. NHH has a very important role in this community. We have an aging community. Uh, we have a growing need for community services as well as acute care. And we need to ensure that it is here for not only us, but also our children. So thank you again to Luminaldi and Margaret for your support, and thank you for them coming out. Thank you, Linda. Um, that concludes the formal speeches, or words of, of, uh, of uh, information that have been shared. Um, Lewis uh, indicated to me he's got a few minutes. He's uh, willing to take a couple questions. Um, and so, uh, if anyone has any questions that they'd like to ask. Could I ask a question of you first? Yes, you can. Uh, with the additional 600,000, what cuts can be avoided and what will stay in place in order for Northumberland Hills Hospital to balance its budget? Um, well, as you may know, the services that we're providing at Northumberland Hills Hospital um, are not being adjusted. They're not being cut. All of the services that we're providing at this hospital are being maintained, and we're very. That was a very uh, key part of our of our plan going into the hospital improvement plan. Yes, we're reorganizing the way we deliver some of those services, but all of the services that we've been delivering, we will continue. So th these dollars help us to come closer to ba uh, budgeting our, ba our, um, our balancing our budget, budgeting our balance, balancing our budget this year. Uh, but it, it doesn't change anything in our hospital improvement plan. Linda, do you have anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, I would just echo that. Um, as I said, all of the work that has already gone on in terms of our hospital improvement plan for this year, um, those changes have been implemented. They will be carried forward. Um, it will allow us, though, with those changes, the savings we have from that, as well as the 600000 to come much closer to a balanced budget. You are required, though, to, b to balance your budget. So if we're getting close to it, there still is going to be a gap. What has to go? I think that's work that we're going to have to continue in discussion with both the Lynn and the Ministry. Uh, it is our intent, as Jack has said before, not to reduce services. We'll continue to see if there are opportunities for us to tweak something, um, save on our medical surgical supplies, through purchasing or you know, whatever that is. Uh, but at this point in time, there's no plan for the rest of this year. One never knows from, from month to month what the surge conditions are going to be at the hospital. We're, we've been operating the surge for the last two months. Um, so it, it's a little higher than what we had anticipated. But it could switch uh, between now and the end of the year, and we could have lower surge, lower than surge conditions. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Yes, 
right. Would this, uh, would this money go specifically to deficit reduction or is any of it going into direct patient care? All going into direct patient care. The 600000 that we receive from the ministry will allow us to continue to operate and provide the patient care services we are currently delivering. Yeah. It's all into actual and uh, well, obviously we are a service industry, so the majority of our costs are all in that service delivery. And let me just stress that point again. This six hundred thousand dollars is six hundred thousand little dollars. This year, six hundred thousand dollars. Next year, six hundred thousand dollars. The next year, and ongoing. This is base funding. This is the good stuff. Thank you. Uh, question. Here. You said the fiscal year ends March twenty first. So okay. two thousand seventeen. So you said. Any other questions? Then thank you so much again for coming and uh, being so attentive and being so interested in the uh, operations here at Montgomery Mills Hospital. As I said before, I think we all should be very proud of this facility and this community. This is a fantastic giving community uh, as those in the service industries know and in the volunteer organizations around town. Uh, Rhonda's over here from the foundation and uh, I'm sure she'll tell you that Members of our community are fantastic when it comes to helping to fund the equipment and the programs that, that we offer here at NHA. So once again, thank you so much for coming. Enjoy the rest of the day.